folks, for I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And I'm here because, well, I was just too lazy to go live streaming because I had stuff to do and I just didn't want to bore you guys too much. And I'll tell you what, three hours for a live stream for just a weekly television show, it's kind of excessive. Um, it's, it's hard on the people at the Friendoverse. Why is this coming up? Wow. Too complex, I guess. It's hard on the people for the Friendoverse for them to justify me taking up three hours of their time. Um, whatever. Time I do take up is probably too much. So yeah, it's just one of those days. That's okay. I need to get back into practice in the big comfy chair. I'm all tranquilo'd. I'm happy. So let's talk about some pro wrestling. The first thing I have to start off with is Hell in a Cell. I did not do good in my predictions. I only guessed one right. It was a st stone cold lock. I didn't even get the bonus right. I did pick. I would have gotten the two stone cold locks right, but you know what? Ah, what a garbage match. I need to say it, folks, for Hell in a Cell. I, I, I was a fan who was asleep. I was a disinterested fan. But the good news is, is that I wasn't the only disinterested fan because all the internet was abuzz about how wonky that show was. Obviously, I wasn't alone in my thoughts, but that's in the past. That's in the past. The, the past is done. The future is yet to be. You gotta live in the present. Ooh, yeah. As the macho man himself would say. Let's see here. So, actually, I did manage to get to the gym. I guess it was a really short time. So, I can cross that off. Because I bungled everything else up. That's why I do want a hobo. Because I need that precious aluminum. So, and that day I go to Jack's. Jack's pickup. Ooh, yummy. I had a delicious salad. Leftover lettuce and onions. I pity any jive talking customer that steps in my face tomorrow. You're going to get a belch full of onion and pulled pork. Well, I can't fix those issues yet. That's okay. So, let's go ahead. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw for, well... Yeah, for the most part, yesterday's date, 6-21-2021. Six, six Probably the last Raw that's going to be in the Thunderdome. I didn't get a chance to go to the Thunderdome. They gave me long times. The one time that I was supposed to be there early, they actually, I actually had to work. So I was not happy. But I am not missing work so that my face can be on a TV screen. That's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, there are some news and notes. Still on for Slammiversary. Definitely on for Triple Mania. But this guy, Hobo Tom, goes live two days. Um, WWE's coming to Orlando August. Oh, wait, I have it in my book. I know there's a reason I do this. Let's see here. June... Stuff. So August 9th, this guy Hobo Tom is going to be here in Orlando. Um, we'll see if I bring a date or not. Might see a girlfriend there. Random woman sighting. That's always good. And then September 3rd. Oh, I have to, I have to text her. <laughs> it's like September 3rd up in Jacksonville. Again, there will be the one, the only... Hobo Tom. And I might have to get someone a shirt too. That's okay. I don't mind getting people wrestling shirts. It's all good. So with all that said, let's talk about Monday Night Raw. Uh, comes out Bobby Lashley with MVP in the MVP Lounge. Um, he has all his beautiful ladies of the evening with him. I think that's the nice way to put it. But yeah, um... Kofi comes out, says, yeah, you know what? I beat you. <laughs> Xavier says, I beat you too. 
We're going to have a second Hell in a Cell match. It's going to be Bobby Lashley versus Xavier Woods. That's not going to end well for Xavier Woods. They're going to make they're going to make Bobby Lashley be a monster until SummerSlam when Brock Lesnar comes back. I know that is like the most trooped um, rumor heading around, but that actually makes the most sense. So yeah, so we have that. Uh, oh yeah, also remember with that, it will take me some time to upload videos, but you guys will get to see live stuff from the WWE, from this guy Hobo Tom. I need to let them know too. Yeah, I'll figure, I'll figure something out. The ninth is shouldn't be in school yet. I don't know, we'll see. Um, so then uh, the first match. Uh, AJ and Omos, they confront the Viking Raiders. Omos. I wonder if he's going to be AJ Styles' bad luck Fale. So he's, a, he's a lot taller than bad luck Fale. But he could fill that same potential role, though. Because yeah, it was AJ Styles versus Ricochet. Um, probably at Money in the Bank, which is going to be a much better show. AJ Styles... And Omos might drop the belts to the Viking Raiders. We'll see. It all depends how Vince is warmed up now that the live crowds are back. If, I'll tell you what. For Omos, even just to be a title holder for this period of time, Vince had to see something in him anyway. So that's okay. So we've AJ Styles versus, versus King Ricochet. He declared his royalty. I came on his pants. That looked good. I'm like, ooh, might we get potential New Japan style AJ Styles and New Japan style King Ricochet. Now, that was close. Starts off chops and heavy blows by AJ Styles. To start, that was really good. Uh, Ricochet tries to fly and stuff. Um, he gets lawn darted into the uh, ring post for his efforts. He's on the outside. Um, AJ, when AJ Styles is controlling the pace, you definitely feel him being in control. Um, Ricochet again when he has to, when he has a chance to hit those faster combinations, he would speed up a little bit. And then AJ Styles said no, tranquil a little bit. So that was really good to see. Oh, I have to remember that timing too. Um, and AJ did the insecurity to the back of the head. That was great. Uh, Ricochet did the rolling Northern Lights suplex. That was like some dead man drop where you like picked him up and almost like a GTS and just like he held him up like, oh wait, he has to, he has to go to sleep. No, he just dropped him. That was, that was vicious looking. That was a good dead man drop. I'll call it that. Uh, Ricochet with the deadlift German though. He was starting to make his comeback. All these lights are blinking all over the place. My internet went out for a little bit when I went to the gym. I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, AJ Styles went for a calf crusher. No, Ricochet got to the ropes. He did the farmer's carry neck breaker. It still looks amazing. Viking Raiders show up. They jump Omos. Omos beats them off for a while, but then he gets both of them, sent him through the timekeeper table. That's enough to distract AJ as AJ went for the phenomenal forearm. Ricochet, King Ricochet countered with a code breaker. One, two, three. King Ricochet makes sense. Going to the Money of the Bank. AJ Styles already has a title. I think he's going to be at the end of his contract. I want... It's, it's, it's soon. But that's a very relative term with the WWE. So, yeah. We'll see what happens with AJ Styles. So, though, just to give a monster rub, that was, that was good to see. AJ Styles... Deserves to be a triple crown winner in the WWE anyway, so I'm, I'm cool with that. This was a good opening match. Solid cheeseburger match. Then there's an orange segment um, with Matt Riddle, a little promo there. Um, Matt Riddle talked about his stash. 
Matt Riddle, you're not going to be in Florida soon. You might not want to talk about your stash. And then he asked a pretty reasonable question. Finally, Matt Riddle asked a reasonable question. He's like, bro, what would happen if we face each other at Money in the Bank? I couldn't fight you. You're my bro. That question, I'm like, that is the most insightful, best question Matt Riddell's had since this time together. So that was good. Uh, then we see Eva Marie. And she's just back to the same old thing. It's like, oh yeah, I had allergies. I couldn't perform at my best. Yeah, yeah. I have to change that too on the card. It's not going to be, it's going to be Eva, all red, everything, Eva Marie. Yeah, it's a Becky Lynch. We'll hold off Becky Lynch's return to the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League. Eva Marie. Yes, pen, pen in that. You're going to make the card for the 4th of July weekend. I think I still have a good picture for that, so. But yeah, um, and then... Now she calls Piper Niven Dewdrop. And Piper Niven looks like a goof. Piper Niven used to kill women. She used to beat up women. She used to beat up men. Yeah. That's the only good thing as well. I won't, I won't do that. But then we had um, Asuka and Naomi. And oh my goodness. The booby window on Asuka's t-shirt is getting bigger. Oh, I want to see all of Asuka again. More of Asuka is good for everyone. Naomi comes out and, oh my goodness, does Naomi have junk in the trunk. Um, and they take on Eva Marie and, and Two Drop. Yeah. They don't know what to do with Eva Marie. She's not necessarily a good wrestler. Not necessarily a good talker. And now that she has, like, to find abs she doesn't have that she doesn't have that smooth tummy anymore she has like abs she's not cute anymore yeah even Marie's gone by the wayside she tried to get too fit women's with abs women with abs and when I can see rib cage and, and spine and, and, and pelvic especially oh oh the top of the pelvic bone oh oh that's, that's not good. Who, who, who was it? It was Dakota Kai's. I swear, I saw Dakota Kai's femoral artery at the branch of the inferior vena cava when she wrestled last because it was in the front part. And I could see that that straight tube-looking thing going down her groin. Wow, that just freaked me out. But wait, I, I, get, I get distracted. I'm sorry, folks. Um, so it was Eva Marie and Dewdrop taking on Asuka and Naomi. Uh, first thing Eva Marie's in, first thing that she does, she tags out. Asuka and Naomi, for the most part, go after Dewdrop. There's a cannonball. Asuka makes the save. Um, Eva tags herself in when she thinks Naomi's worn out. She gets kicked out. Um, Dewdrop does not like this. She doesn't like being told what to do. Um, she just decides to leave. Because, well, Eva Marie decided to leave. And she gets rolled up by Naomi, so by virtue of that, Asuka and Naomi, they get to advance to the woman's money in the bank. I don't know. That's going to be a weird show to predict. That match itself was a ham sandwich of a match. It's so hard to give any Eva Marie match her matches seriously it's weird um then there was let's see here a uh, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair segment um then there's a boo Sonya Deville boo boo Sonya Deville boo can't boo Sonya Deville enough I don't care that it's pride month if she's going to come out as being a lesbian, I want to see a live sex show on Raw. Oh, I shouldn't be saying that. Can't do that anymore on TV. Yeah, but I don't know. 
I could honestly care less. Whatever makes her happy, whatever she chooses to do in her bedroom with whoever, I am all for it. Um, in her case, she kind of posts, posts any details in the form of videos and or hidden web images. I'd be fine with that. Or, or leaked nude pictures. Probably would be pretty good too. But yeah, other than that, what two adults do in the privacy of their own house, I'm fine with. Um, don't get me involved. And probably the only other political thing is, it's not marriage. They have terms for that, like silly union. I'm fine with that. That's all it is, really. But that's a whole other debate for a whole other day. Um, then there was a Natalia and Mandy Rose recap. This is that was useless. That was a useless. I think, well, I think even other people said this was the most useless opening pre-show match ever. They could have done so much more, but nothing you can do about that. Then it was Renior versus John Morrison. This was actually good. Um, big moves by Johnny Mundo. Uh, he goes for the Americana. I love they call it the Americana. It was really close to being an American. It was like, it was like a sit-up Americana. It was pretty good though. Um, Randy, again, then he's just big enough. Where he beats up Mundo for a little bit, you know those big chops. That's good. Um, he he. They go outside. Now this is the one continuity issue. Randy takes Mundo's head and slams it against the tabletop and of course backdrops him on top of said announce table but does not get disqualified. Rhea Ripley just kind of like flung this regular ring object, hit Charlotte and gets DQ'd. Don't understand. You need continuity. You must be consistent. <laughs> like Bill Alfonso. Call it right down the middle. Yep, call it right down the middle. Bill Alfonso used to say. Yeah, this was, I mean, that was that was great though. Besides that, no DQ. What? Again, the rule book I sent to my nephew. It is just kind of this random collection of notes. It looks like my one of my very early pre. Actually, it looks like one kind of my notebooks with like sticky notes and all other kind of attachments and scribbles on it. <laughs> Jeez, I still, I still might potentially have jury duty too. I'm not looking forward to those notes. Actually, I should sell those. I should take good notes. Sell those notes. Indeed. Um, wait, let, let me get back on track here. Um, so then back in the ring, we're in stomps on Mundo. In the eye rake with the with the laces of his boots, classic Orton stuff. A window off the second rope with a kick. He goes into Juju Katami and then an arm ringer. Mundo's dark. he had to, he had to take some class in, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because he knows a lot of that stuff. Um, that are some mixed martial arts. Judo and Prime not so much because they don't focus on submissions. Definitely uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or catch wrestling. Um, Orton has a massive clothesline and the chops. Hits a draping DDT. Miz shoots Orton in the face with a water cannon. So at this point, Orton's upset. He starts chasing. He wants to chase the Miz around. And it made sense that Matt Riddle came in on a scooter, started chasing the Miz around. Miz is in his wheelchair, wheeling himself. And Matt Riddle's like on his little scooter, chasing him. With that, Orton's like. Huh? Um, that got was enough of a distraction so that Johnny Mundo got him in the corner, hit Starship Pain, and Johnny Mundo won. This is a surf and turf moment, folks. Then there was a Shayna and Alexa recap. 
Yeah, it goes kind of the way you expect it to. Um, this is my change pen, so my kind of writing is getting... Oh my god! That's right. They had Nikki Cross come out in a superhero's outfit. And it looked like a terrible... 1970, no, no, not, no, not 1957 female superhero outfit. It covered her from head to toe. Yeah. It was gold, like, like she, she looked like a female uh, buster gold. Only way I can explain that. <sighs> Nikki, so sorry, Nikki. Please accept my condolences on the choices that Vince McMahon gave you. Because they're not good. I, I hope the money's worth it, Nikki. But at one time you were Nikki Glenn Cross. And then you became just Nikki Cross of sanity. You came out, mugged people. Went bonkers. The squirrels, literally the squirrel eating coffee grounds. And now you're this. I don't even know what to say. Not a good look, though. I mean... If she came out as like an 80s or 90s comic book woman. Wearing like barely anything. It still wouldn't be good. But it would be better than this, though. And you know what I'm talking about. One day I'll find my... my one day I'll find... My comic books are here somewhere. I have to put them out. Maybe in place of my... Well, I do like my fishing magazines there. One day I'll find my comic book stash again. It's here in this house somewhere. But yeah. Like 1980s micronaut, female micronaut. Barely there, skimpy bikini. But no. No. Not when Nikki Cross was wearing... I almost lost respect for Nikki Glenn Cross. Unless it's some weird dress up cosplay thing she likes to do with, with, with Big Demo. And again, that falls under the realm of two consenting adults in the bedroom. Not on Monday Night Raw. But, so with that being said, it was Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross taking on Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Uh, Shayna, uh, the Kimura takedown looks freaking amazing. Uh, Nikki Cross is so good. She hit the slingshot La Mahistra. Always good to see. Um, they go to the outside. Nikki takes out Shayna Baszler, Reginald, and Nia Jax. Um, Alexa then tags in after the Bulldog. Um, and then Shayna Baszler was smart. She went right after the ice. The eye rake of Alexa Bliss. Took her head, ran the eyes along the rope. Again, really going after the eyes of Alexa Bliss. That's good. What What is the WWE and Vince's obsession with eyes nowadays? That's weird. Remember, Rey Mysterio was an eye for an eye match. Oh, oh God, no. They're not going to have an eye for an eye match between Alexa Bliss and Shayna Baszler. Oh, please, no. They can't do that. Besides, and, be, and just because I said they can't do that, they probably will do that. Not good. But let's get, let, let me finish up this match. Um, yeah, Nia gets distracted. Nia and Nikki go at it for a while. Then there's the hypnosis, which is the most illegal move in all professional wrestling. Followed up by a roll-up victory. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, they get to face um, four other women as well as Asuka and Naomi the women's money in the bank match uh, this match it was a s solid match I couldn't complain it was fairly entertaining besides Nikki you know what I hate to do this to you Nikki just because of that most hideous outfit this is a ham sandwich of a match And then there was another Boo Sonya Deville moment. Boo Sonya Deville. 
Boo. Boo, Sonya. Can't say boo, Sonya the villain off. Boo. 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 Um. Wait, did I say boo, Sonya the villain off? No, I meant boo. Boo, Sonya the villain. Boo. She had too many, too, too many segments on, on Raw. You'll probably have like too, too many on SmackDown, which I won't be seeing because I have to work. And go driving up to Jacksonville. Um, then there was a um, little thing between Matt Riddle and Drew McIntyre. Jinder Mahal showed up too. He wants in on this action. Who knows? Um, then we had Matt Riddle taking on Drew McIntyre. And oh, those welts. That cannot feel good. He had to have a lot of the adult beverage, a lot of the scotched, scotched milk, or malted milk as they call it, or scotched milk, or, or scotched ginger ale, who knows. Because a couple of pints was not going to make that feeling go away. So yeah, um, that just looked nasty. Now start off very classical match, collar and elbow tie up. Uh, test of strength, a little stir down. Matt Riddle goes after the ribs. Like whenever he goes after that, he always gets he he had a clothesline that gets tossed. But you can really tell Drew was selling all the damage he took from the previous night, which makes sense. Uh, let's see here. Riddle tries to come back and Broton on the ribs. Now they go to the outside of the ring. Drew takes a little bit more punishment. Go, get back inside the ring, the second Broton, but this time Drew gets the knees up. Still still hurts the rib stuff. Trust me. Probably one of the more painful, nagging, hurts that, I have, that I've had. There's a difference between being hurt and being injured. If you're hurt, you can continue. If you're injured, you can't continue. If you, like the one day I... I strained some intercostal muscles. And oh my God, did it hurt to twist, to bend, or to breathe the wrong way. That hurt. I've heard broken ribs. I've never had broken ribs, thankfully. But if you if you literally break a rib you don't and you don't get any lung puncture and it's just, just a clean break, um, it literally hurts to breathe. And I can imagine that af after just like straining some intercostal muscles, it, it just hurt. It's like, oh, it hurts to breathe, but I have to breathe. Oh. Oh. So, yeah. So, I can just imagine what that's like. Um. Then he went like head first, did like a head first reverse Alabama slam. Matt Riddle sells so good though. Um, let me see. Uh, they're both going to the top rope. Drew McIntyre goes on the tree of woe, reverses that to a German suplex with a monster setup. Um, Drew again he got caught in the top. He wanted to go to the top rope, do something big, got caught in a triangle, then reverse that to a backslide, then a future shock DGT. Very good chain wrestling. I will always applaud good chain wrestling. Uh, Matt Riddell hit the rip core knee. Follow up the weak kick. You didn't need that. There was no floating bro, no claymore. I got the bro mission. That was good. Uh, was a, then we had the when they trade big moves, the flying knee and the and the Scottish headbutt. <sighs> Scottish headbutt still has to be up there with a Simone headbutt. Simone headbutt number one. Scottish headbutt is, is like 1B. So Simone headbutt is 1A. Scottish headbutt is 1B. Because they're both amazing looking and sounding and, and are freaking vicious. Now uh, then... Drew positions Matt Riddle into the electric chair position. This time Matt Riddle goes through with an Okada roll. 
guess the win that way. Different. I'll say what this is. Matt Riddell wins. He is moving on. He had a nice little stare down with Randy. And it's like, bro, come on, bro. You can talk to me, bro. You can tell me anything, bro. And Randy's just like. Look for a second. Randy was going to fist bump him. So yeah, so we'll, so we'll see what happens with that. But again, this was a surf and turf match. Then we get to the main event of the evening. You have Xavier Woods versus Bobby Lashley in a Hell in a Cell match. Um, this was good. Well, Woods starts off quick, the drop kick. I, I didn't get that right. He did like flay skin off of him. Because it looked like a raspberry because Bobby Lashley is a very dark individual. And when that band-aid came off, there was like a whole patch of pink there. Like, well, I can't even show you that color pink on me because you know, I don't have that. But it's like, oh, I've seen that before. That's not good. When you see those patches of pink skin, it doesn't matter. Even for white people, when you, see, when you start seeing pink... That's very bad. Uh, so, so yeah, so that came off. And, ooh, I think my chair is floating down. A little bit. Because I've been moving, I've been wiggling around in it a little bit. Too much movement for it, but that's okay. It hasn't, hasn't been shot yet, which is good. Um, so, yeah, where was I? Oh, yeah. Again, that, that quick, good, quick drop kick. Uh, got, but then he got stuck in the corner, which is never a good thing when you're against a champion. The likes of one Bobby Lashley. There we go. That's where it should be. I think. Uh, yeah, a little too much back and forth motion. That's it. Yeah. Praise for the $29 I paid for the shirt. It'll last. Oh, yeah, a year ago, too. So, yeah. That's good. It'll, it'll last for a little bit longer. Another year or so. Next time they come out with a $29.99 gamer chair, I'll get it then. This time next year, I should be good to go. Um, he starts with a quick drop kick. He gets stuck in the corner, though. Um, that Again, if you're going to be stuck in the corner against a person like Bobby Lashley, that's a very bad sign. Um, he needs two flatliners on the outside. They go, there was like some weird chair shot. Xavier Woods threw him out of the chair at Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley caught it, threw it back and punched him. Punched, well, actually punched the chair. And that sent, I guess, the chair reeling into Xavier Woods' head. Who else beat? So many electronic gadgets nowadays. But yeah, so that was pretty cool. It was kind of like, the, like a punch version of the Van Daminator. Uh, Woods, he had two missile drop kicks through the ropes when they were going back in. Bobby just pounds. He gets poor Xavier Woods in the corner and he just pounds him mercilessly. Uh, Woods attempted. Woods got trapped. Again. Oh, in the ring skirt. Then, the hockey, then, of course, like a hockey fight. He's covered up. Bobby Lashley's just wailing. Freaking. Visage, or at least the outline shape of one Xavier Woods. Um, Bobby, he countered the roll up. He just grabbed the ropes. So you're not rolling me up. I'm smarter than that. I graduated from, I, I got an A in that class. Roll up counter, which is a 103 level class. Because the roll up is the 102 level. This is the 102 level class. It's roll up 102. Roll up 103 is where he learns the counter stuff. That was good. At least someone knows how to counter a roll up. Uh, Woods then took the kendo stick to Bobby Lashley. He, he did the walking ropes with a big elbow drop and then sends both himself and Bobby Lashley through the table that was set up. Um, however, Woods 
He ate the spear after the he yeah. he did a little too much showboating. Bobby Lashley came back. He was ate the spear, the full Nelson. Very quickly he taps. He's done. But no, and so Bobby Lashley wins in pretty convincing fashion too. That was a really good match. And then just to stick it to Kofi Kingston, because the referee kind of kind of goes back in so that they can like hand titles back. Um, so the doors open because really the match is over. Uh, the referee goes out to get the title. Bobby Lashley puts Xavier Woods back in the full Nelson. MVP gets in the cage, the steel cage, locks it so Kofi Kingston can't get in. Smart. MVP is smart. He knows what he's doing. And then he taunts Kofi Kingston by putting Xavier Woods in the, the hurt lock, the full Nelson, and then right in front of him against the cage. And MVP says, John, this is what you want. This is what you want. This is what he gets. You want to talk trash? This is what you get. That was good. And that's how we go out. This, again, another, oh, wow, surf and turf match. And that was Monday Night Raw. Wow, someone got a fire lit under them because this is a better Monday Night Raw than I remember the past ones being. This Monday Night Raw also seemed better than the pay-per-view they just had. Who knows? Um, so that was Monday Night Raw. Solid, you know what, had its low points, had its high points overall. Solid cheeseburger show. And that's it, folks. Um, some news and notes for this week. I do have to work late the next two nights. So there will be no... Oh, there is no AEW this night. So... There will be no NXT show tomorrow. Wednesday I have off from doing shows. That's good, because I have to work that night. Thursday I'll be back doing my normal Impact show. Friday I have to work, and I have to go to Jacksonville, so there's no show Friday. Saturday I'm watching a movie. I don't know if you'll look that up. Sunday there's no wrestling. Other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll see everyone Thursday. Bye.